another type of graph for visualizing numerical data is a dot plot. A dot plot is significantly simpler than a histogram, and it comes down to as simple as whatever your data is, every number is referenced along the bottom, and we just put a dot every time a data value occurs that corresponds to that number. So, in this case, we're looking at blood alcohol content worldwide. So, uh, about 31 different countries were surveyed to get their blood alcohol concentration limits. There, were, there was one country that had a limit of zero, two countries that had a limit of 0 0.01, one country that had a limit of 0 0.07, and so on. So dot plots take that numerical data and just turn it into a row of dots above that value to show how many times an individual data value occurred. So something to note here that makes this quite a bit different from a histogram is that there are no classes or bins. Each number, each row of dots corresponds to one specific data value that occurred or one specific number that occurred. Constructing these, we would select from that graph menu dot plot. We select the data value that we want or the data, the column of data that we want. That um, name will get transferred over to this other box to indicate that it's selected. And that's all we have to do for a dot plot. We do have some of these graph properties for adding titles and labels to our graphs. But for a dot plot, there are no options or settings that are required to generate it. We simply select our data set. Whenever we construct dot plots or work with dot plots, we still want to discuss shape, center, spread, and outliers. So using this graph that's been generated above, let's provide an interpretation. So first we can talk about the shape of our distribution. So in this case, we could say that the distribution is symmetric, or at least relatively symmetric, if we were to think again about the idea of tracing a curve over the tops of each of those peaks. So we have a few values that kind of deviate from that symmetry, but more or less, if we consider this to be our point of symmetry, we have a line of dots, a line of dots, a couple of dots, a couple of dots. So we have something that's relatively symmetric. And the center, symmetric. And the center, we'll combine this talking about shape and center, is 0 0.05. So we look at just the center of that distribution, 0 0.05. So what we can say from this is that most countries have a BAC limit of 0 0.05 with other countries or with fewer countries having larger or smaller limits. So we have our center of 0 0.05, and our distribution is symmetric. So that means that those tails are going to dip down to both the left and the right. So we're going to have fewer countries with higher limits, fewer countries with lower limits, and the most around that center value. So we kind of combine shape and center into one discussion there. We can also discuss the spread. So in this case, the data ranges from 0 to 0 0.1. And the question is, is that a big range or is that a small range? So the difference between 0 and 0 0.1, just as numbers, is pretty small. But in this case, what we're talking about is blood alcohol concentration, um, how intoxicated a person has to be before that starts to affect their ability to operate. I had no idea what the answer was, so I pulled up a couple of websites and did a little bit of research and found that once you start getting to values of 0 0.1 or higher, your judgment becomes significantly impaired, motor coordination is impaired, but it's not until you get to values like 0.16 or 0.19 that one particular website described as being sloppy drunk. Um, that was their wording for it, which is kind of funny on a professional site to see something like sloppy drunk. So. It's still up to a little bit of a debate.
is 0.1, from 0 to 0.1, is that a really large range or is that not a very big range? Um, someone with a little more understanding in this area might have um, more information to share on that, but I'm going to say this tells us that there is not a very large range. There is not a very significant difference between countries at the low end and high end of these limits. So values are ranging from 0 to 0 0.1. Obviously, there's a difference between having a BAC limit of 0 and 0 0.1. At, excuse me, at 0 0.1, some sites say that you're starting to get more impaired judgment, but it doesn't seem like it's getting to any incredibly extreme levels yet. And one thing we could add to this is that this tells us that the United States has a higher level of allowed BAC limit than most other countries in this study. So that doesn't necessarily mean that our limit is too high, but when we start to look at other countries, we're on the high end of that scale. So the last question then, the last piece that we want to interpret is about outliers. This would come down to some judgment again. Is 0 0.1 an outlier? We do have a little bit of a gap between 0 0.08 and 0.1. That's not a huge gap, but there's less of a gap at the low end. So it would come down to a little bit of interpretation. So I'm going to say, if you consider 0 0.1 to be an outlier, then at least one country has an unusually high BAC limit. If you don't consider 0 0.1 to be an outlier, then all countries fall within a normal range for BAC limits. So what we'll be saying is there are no countries that have extremely high or extremely low limits for blood alcohol content.